Uh, hi everyone, so I'm Saurabh. I work for Linux System Group in Microsoft and uh, today I will be presenting the topic on accelerating Linux kernel booter for large multi-core system. So I also have uh, my colleague Srivatsa with me who unfortunately couldn't join in person but he will be helping me out with this presentation remotely. Hi everyone. Okay, so starting the discussion, so what we observe, so the problem uh, statement of our uh, topic is that Linux kernel doesn't boot very well with the increasing number of CPUs and increasing number of NUMA nodes. So we did few experiments and uh, that is the core topic of, of the discussion today. We have done some of the uh, optimizations and have done a lot of analysis which we want to share with you and finally we will uh, discuss what all the uh, improvements we have achieved and what all the further things we can take away from this analysis so as to further improve the Linux kernel boot time for higher number of CPUs. So first the problem, so we have done a lot of experiments in some of our lab machines which uh, uh, scales from 32 CPUs to uh, 17, 80 CPUs and so if we see this table, right, so in, uh, for the if, if small VMs or uh, machine, uh, it just uh, takes under a second to boot for like 32 CPUs and it gradually increases as, the, as we keep on adding the number of CPUs. So if you see for 1780, it reaches up to 45 seconds. And uh, so th that is the core problem we will be targeting today. And uh, across these slides, I will be talking for the numbers for these 1780 CPUs uh, machines only, which takes around 45 seconds, so this is our problem statement. So further going, the first thing came to our mind was this uh, patch series which uh, introduced in 6.5 which uh, claims to be parallel bring up of secondary CPU, although uh, the author claims that on certain uh, machines it, the benefits are not as great as uh, is observed on the other machines, so on the bare metal it was claimed that it uh, gains around 17, 720 milliseconds for 112 CPUs. Unfortunately, for the Hyper-V virtual machines under test, we didn't find any reasonable gain. So basically, we have to look beyond this past series for our solution. So overall, we divided our boot pro Linux boot process into four sections, depending on the boot time. The and we will dwell deeper into all of these sections now. So the first is the SMP initialization, commonly called as VP initialization, where secondary CPUs bring, gets bring up one by one. And this was taking almost around 25 seconds out of 45 seconds spent. And uh, the reason being there are a huge number of callbacks, all of being serialized and uh, like 237 callbacks were there for the kernel under test, which was 6.5 kernel. And so what we, we try to uh, observe, which all callbacks are taking the most time and uh, uh, Interestingly, the VM state callback was taking the most of the, these 25 seconds. So it was like more than 50%. It was taking around 14 seconds out of 25. And uh, looking deeper into that uh, callback, we saw refresh zone state threshold where we calculate the threshold for each of the CPU is something which was the culprit and taking all of it 14 seconds. So to understand this little bit deeper, so in the, on the left hand side, I put the code of that function. There are a couple of loops for each number of NUMA and there are a couple of loops for number of CPUs and they keep, the, and this functions gets called for 1780 times, which is 1780 times, which is the number of CPUs under test. So you can just think, uh, means how much it is taking. So for easier understanding, I put a calculation like for 32 CPUs and one NUMA, this, uh, I, these loops uh, togetherly take around a thousand loop iteration, whereas it increases for 16 NUMA and 1780 up to 50 million. If you compare, means they are humongously apart. And that was the core uh, problem I, I, I observed. And uh, then we to try to do the fix uh, on the right hand side, what we try to do is we, we observe that a lot of this calculation is throw away instead of, do, because every time a CPU comes, the last calculation is thrown away. So why to do a lo lot many times? So what we have proposed is do it in the end, like late init call when the CPU, uh, means all the CPUs are up at that time. So do it once. So all that 14 seconds goes away. Uh, so this patch I sent, Andrew Morton has been kind enough to accept that in the RC1 of 6.11. And this is going through testing through all of that. Although I'm, uh, there is a major uh, comment. So I, I added the some of the persons who did this calculation in, initially. This is Christoph uh, Lamerant, and with him I discussed that will there be problem that some time uh, for a, a small span of time CPUs are running without threshold, and uh, so there is no clear benchmark and there is no clear decision which we could make. But at least in the experiments we can see that this is a better performance and. Uh, 
uh, at the moment there is no major neck but i would really appreciate if somebody can look into and can uh, improve this further uh, so keeping this in thought for q and a i'll move ahead uh, so further we see the scheduler domain so this is the time where scheduler uh, data scheduled domain data structure get initialized this so out of uh, so this section also takes around 10 seconds out of 10 seconds we see the single function which is required to check the sanity of the cpu topology it takes around 8 seconds out of this 10 and we strongly believe that cpu topology is something which doesn't change in every boot so why not make it as a debug option so that once in a while people can test their see, uh, topology it's in and they can disable this in production so this also saves us around eight seconds uh, so i'll quickly move to the next section and this is uh, the common init label so uh, we put the debugger to know to know the all init label calls for the various driver module inits and late inits so we list down that and one of the major uh, initialization routine was the vm bus in it this is our hyper v specific driver which is taking around 3 second and i've listed some more so we ta what we found this, this the reason for this increase is because as the number of cpu grows the same functions gets called again and again and in a serial manner instead of parallel ideally we would expect that if you have more cpu you 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 can leverage that to have the faster processing done rather than making it serial on a single cpu so th that is the approach what uh, for that i uh, means we have provided the fix so instead of uh, calling the regular hot plug api which does the call of these callbacks serially i deferred all of the work and uh, later synchronized them uh, like in the line 77 you can see i'm scheduling them instead of uh, regular hot plug api so this is the concept which you think uh, will parallelize the cpu callbacks instead of series and this saves complete uh, around two seconds for this callback and i think this is something which we can leverage for lot many other things so keeping this in mind i'll uh, i'll bring this up again in in the future solutions what we are thinking uh, the next is the overall boot optimization i want to see so with these three fixes uh, what i just discussed out of uh, 45 seconds we bring down the boot time for 1780 machines up to 21 seconds so uh, this is almost like 50 percent off and in out of these three patches like uh, the one of the patches is already upstream that is vm bus in it uh, and the vm stat facts uh, is also in linux next and the third patch schedule in it is something which uh, i have to plan so I will be doing that soon. Um, so even after all this uh, optimization, we think still SMP init and init calls uh, sequence can be further optimized. Like they are still taking around 11 and 7.4. The more callbacks we can have parallelized and which can leverage the more number of CPU, we can still bring down this number to significantly lower value. And yeah, so this is our first proposal to the community that we can parallelize more CPUs. So in here, uh, the major idea is to uh, uh, first identify what all callbacks can be serialized, uh, can be parallelized, because uh, of course, uh, blindly we can't make all the uh, CPU callbacks to be parallel, uh, and they would rec some of these callbacks may require locks and all as well, because they have never been tested for, for parallelization. So the first part is to identify the right callbacks and then implement an API in, in hot plug or the CPU callback registration path to allow these to be the uh, par parallelization. So this is our first proposal. For the second proposal, I'll hand over to Srivasa for the other ideas. Thanks, Arup. So if you look at a CPU online operation today, two types of CPUs are involved. One is the control CPU, which brings up our online C target CPU by executing a series of uh, CPU hot plug callbacks, almost 237 of them. Uh, and the callbacks execute in one of these two kinds of CPUs. And the way Linux boots up all the CPUs in the system is pictured on the left-hand side of the slide, where CPU 0 acts as the control CPU and brings up CPU 1 as the target, followed by CPU 2 and CPU 3 and so on, until all CPUs are brought up. So as you can see, this is this operation is linear in the number of CPUs and therefore does not scale well as well as we'd like for large machines. What we'd like to propose instead is an idea we call CPU, group CPU bring up, uh, which is pictured on the right hand side of this slide, where the aim is to leverage the amount of parallelism that exists in the system at any given point in time in terms of the number of online CPUs. So in this approach, you'll see that CPU zero brings up CPU one or online CPU one. And at that point in time, we have two fully online CPUs that can independently bring up two other CPUs. At that stage, we have um, four CPUs that are fully online, CPU 0, 1, 2, and 3, 
that can further bring up four other CPUs, right? Until the full um, um, bring up completes. So in a way, groups of CPUs are bringing up other groups of CPUs in parallel. Okay? And, and as we can see, this approach um, yields uh, logarithmic time complexity uh, in the number of CPUs, and therefore it is uh, going, you know, likely to be much faster than the linear uh, time that we have today. However, um, we have to be careful that um, we can't approach this problem entirely as an algorithmic optimization exercise because there could be uh, various constraints involved. For instance, um, the underlying hardware topology or the CPU architecture may dictate which CPUs can bring, bring up which other CPUs, meaning there might be restrictions on which can be control CPUs and target CPUs for the bring up, uh, which can limit the amount of benefit from this approach, potentially. Um, the other constraint that we are aware of is that the CPU hot plug framework itself has some limitations for this approach. Um, today, every callback, CPU hot plug callback, is executed one after the other, and therefore does not need any explicit synchronization. Right? Everything is protected under the CPU hot plug lock. Whereas um, in this approach, the group CPU bring up, by design, we are executing multiple callbacks in parallel because there are multiple online operations happening in parallel. And that breaks the assumption of a not needing synchronization. So that will have to be implemented into each of the callback functions. Uh, similarly, the CPU hot plug lock itself may need some changes because uh, you can no longer assume that a single hot plug operation is in force at any given time. Um, so these are some of the challenges that we are aware of. But uh, the takeaway from this uh, talk is that um, you know, um, Linux uh, CPU bring up for large machines does not scale well. And while we have come uh, half the way, there's still more ways to go um, in terms of optimization. So uh, we'd like to look at uh, targeted approaches for callbacks that take time, as well as holistic approaches like group CPU bring up that can potentially uh, bring us even more benefits. And hopefully they all compose so that they are not mutually exclusive ideas. Uh, with that, we'd like to uh, open up for Q&A. Thank you. Thanks, Eva, sir. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned the CPU parallel bring up patch set at the start, and then you said that kind of didn't work, and especially it didn't work on virtualized environments. It only works on yeah. bare metal. I'd like to understand a bit more why that didn't work and yeah. why you can't actually, instead of this whole group approach, yeah. why can't you make the parallel CPU bring up work properly? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, so that patch series what we talked about in the I think the initial slide that was uh, based on the 6.5 uh, kernel what the patch is done by I think uh, uh, for the bare metal I think that is our target the major so uh, in Linux kernel there are around 237 or 200 odd callbacks and I think what that patch does is is basically target the AP callback so where they kick the AP and wait for AP to keep alive. So earlier, all the CPUs used to be serially wait for that AP to be uh, alive and then move ahead. So what this patch series majorly differentiated is that they all the uh, they kick all the APs together and, and not waiting for their keep alive uh, means to get that alive status. And so that may have uh, improved the performance on a bare metal where actually the CPUs comes up. But uh, on the Hyper-V VM, I will they bring up is actually virtual. CPUs would already be active and they may not take that much time. So, in fact, I, I, I in my experiment, I didn't find that to be much. But, I mean, are you basically saying then the hypervisor is, is serializing operations internally and it's... Uh, no, so I, I'm saying the patch, uh, the Linux kernel earlier was serializing this uh, process, like kicking the AP, waiting for that AP to be alive, and that is for each CPU. After this patch, it is uh, paralyzed. Now, Hyper-V doesn't change anything. It is the uh, virtual environment in which I am working. They, the host would have already brought up CPU. It's the virtual machine just kicking it virtually and getting that. So that is faster rather than the actual kicking and bringing up the in the bare metal. So I'd like to add to Which that uh, uh, a little bit. Uh, so as Saurabh mentioned, only one specific portion of the entire hot plug operation is being parallelized in that patch set. And that the, the amount of gain depends on how slow is that operation. That's why you know kicking all the CPUs together and then synchronizing them uh, makes sense. But if that operation is not expensive, uh, in the, as in the case of virtual machines, then the, the synchronization uh, and async execution does not help. That, that's the difference with bare metal. Yeah, and we saw this on KVM as well. At, at the time, it was it was really working on bare metal. So we send the the init and the, the CPU IPIs to all the CPUs, and they they are all doing their first 16-bit startup in parallel, rather than having to wait for each one to come up before we wake the next one. 
and on NVM, that just isn't slow because we're not actually waking CPUs up. They were just, you know, entering a guest mode in the, from the hypervisor. So the thing that we have parallelized was not adding lot, lots of time on a virtual machine. So yeah, we saw this on KVM, and it's unsurprising the use of this AM on Hyper-V. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah I think but there... we plan to move more and more, as you've talked about, uh, yeah. to being parallel after yeah. that first step. Yeah, yeah, right. So basically, this targeted one of the callbacks rather than also we ample. We still have ample opportunities to parallelize more things. So yeah, thank you for perfectly explaining this. Any other questions? Got it. Um, so you, you mentioned you have about like, like 200 something hot plug uh, callbacks in, in the mm -hmm. beginning. That sounds quite a, like, like a surprisingly large number. Yeah. And one of the differences that I, I've, I've seen across architectures is that the, the scale on x86 seems to be significantly off compared to what I usually see on an ARM system, where um, we, we scale not as terribly badly with the number of CPUs. So how many of these hot plug calls are actually necessary and can we just get rid of them and how many can be moved to be done by the secondary after it comes up rather than the cpu that's bringing it up so uh, if you it means if i understand your question correctly you are asking means out of all these 200 plus callbacks what are the callbacks can actually be paralyzed is that the question well par paralyzed or removed like which ones do we even care at all about like if the, the the hot plug callback literally just initializes a variable that just you can just initialize somewhere else yeah or could have already have so initialized one of these patches, right yeah, I think a lot many callbacks are like a hot plug which comes after the boot process. I mean, that is what you are going towards, right? So, means a lot of CPU doesn't hot plug at the time and they they don't provide a lot of benefits. Is that what you are referring? I'm sure you're deeper into into what all these hot plugs yeah. hot plug um, actions actually do. Have you identified any that, or have you identified a set at least of things that we can just literally remove the whole hot plug? action for because that's going to be way more scalable scalable than doing the triangle uh, uh okay. triangular okay so instead uh, of the api scalable. their own uh, own uh, some uh, implementation instead of doing this through the callbacks i or think just, what, uh, we, we I, want I the call to a point where it's just not necessary yeah. yes sorry go ahead i think broadly speaking um, Callbacks come in the form of various subsystems needing to adapt to a new CPU coming up. And therefore, they'll implement subsystem specific logic to say, OK, you have one more CPU. Let me initialize my per CPU data structure or initialize some hardware state for the CPU and so on. And that kind of also differentiates where that um, callback needs to run, whether on the target or the control CPU. Right? Um, I don't think we have uh, undertook an investigation to see if a call given callback is really necessary or optional. Uh, but that's a good suggestion. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't immediately expect to have a significant reduction in the number of callbacks that are necessary. But I, I think the other meta point you're making is: can we implement the same logic, not as a hot plug callback, but something else, so that the same initialization can potentially be done, let's say, in bulk, right? Uh, like the VM. Uh, uh, VM bus fix, uh, that we talk. Uh, VM right, right. So the, the two the two avenues you have is the one you described, right, where you just basically do it on the target CPU instead of uh, in in some control CPU, uh, which certainly moves that work off to to scale really well because you're doing it on all, all these these secondary CPUs on um, in parallel. But much more like even even then you still get memory contention and the other and, and another aspect. So if we can instead rework code to a point where we don't need that hot plug mechanism at all, where we don't need to scale with it in the hot phase of bringing up these CPUs, that's even better. And the, the reason I'm asking, the re, the re, David, you're going to be there one, in one second. The reason I'm asking is that I have seen more of this effect on x86 than on ARM. So it might be sensible to take a look and compare where maybe we are just executing less of these things on an ARM system, and then ask ourselves, why are we doing these things there on x86 in the first place? One of the options maybe is to not treat everything as hot plug. Boot is different to hot plug. And it's basically what you've done for VMstat, right? Yeah. I'm not going to do it all every time as we bring up all the APs at, at boot. We're going to yeah. treat boot as different. And it's less pretty. It's less, oh, everything is just a hot plug. But it's a lot faster. Yeah, I, I think a major chunk of our analysis left is like to identify all of these callbacks, which can be paralyzed, and I think this can add very well, like even the, if they are required at that time. So yeah, perfectly makes sense. Good suggestions. Uh, we'll work on that. Sorry, time is out. Let's move the discussion to the hallway and to the matrix. Thanks for the presentation. Thank you very much.